Hello and welcome to your award-winning The Reasons I'm Broke podcast, bringing you the reasons we're broke every single week through news and headlines ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I'm Daniel, and your other host this week comes from Lazy Gaming Guys. It is Julian. Welcome on, Julian. Hello, everybody. I'm back, and I'm downright fierce ready to do the podcast today. That's a fighting game reference. (laughs) Is it Street Fighter? Yes. I should know this. I haven't picked up Street Fighter 6 yet. I should jump on that. But yeah, there I am will be, going to be picking it up soon. There will be some Street Fighter talk as we get into the Brocap block. But first, the way if this is your very first episode of the show, the way we format it is we go through this week's news. And then we end it with the Brocap block, which is what Julian and I have been up to since you last heard us. So let's jump right in and explore sector number 577. So this one is not a surprise. I think we're going to start seeing more of this as the year goes on. A forthcoming Dungeons & Dragons source book contains artwork enhanced with AI, but Wizards of the Coast will update their guidelines to prevent future AI art submissions. So artist Ilya Shikpin used AI tools to quote-unquote enhance some commissioned pieces leading to controversy. So the affected artwork will be reworked, and other RPG publishers like Paizo have banned the use of AI artwork. Wizards emphasized their commitment to human-created content for the game. I know you and some of the member members of Lazy Gaming Guys and even some Brokeheads do play D&D. Is this something that you care about personally as a D&D player when it comes to the artwork? For the D&D aspect of it, it doesn't change anything from how I feel about AI art. AI art usually unless it's like you are unless you are programming it yourself to use your own art to and to help you to as a tool to assist you in art not make it not make the whole art entirely i'm not a fan of ai art at all essentially because essentially a lot of ai art just kind of takes from whatever algorithm that is that's attached to regardless of permission or not and it's and it's you no, know, it's dealing without you know like any kind of set rules and like more companies and organizations are starting to make content rules against this kind of thing and i understand it's like as long as but my stance is, is like i said earlier as long as it's your own art and your own and a AI, and an ai algorithm program that you made that you put that was put together to go through all of your different art and kind of manage something that would be a base for what you're making and not the exact like art itself so you could be lazy and not like actually put more and put less effort into it until unless you were like your hands busted or something and you're like or you're like just not able to like draw at all it's like you got to put a little bit more effort into it because i might not dabble in it professionally but i still do like some artistic stuff on my own and i i get it and i have plenty of artistic friends who feel this same way i do about this i know as a consumer i wouldn't want the the thing that I bought, like the source book, the guidebook, the hardcover, or even comic books to be, you know, even partially AI generated. I know when I, when people were talking about Secret Invasion and that MCU show, we talked about that last week and how the opening credits were made with AI. And I know if I were an, an MCU fan, I would think that I got kind of cheated out on my, you know, subscription to Disney plus or whatever, if I were subscribed to it. Same goes with if I were to buy a D&D book and find out that the complete cover was AI generated, I'd be like, well, then what are we paying for? You know, it feels like these companies would be looking for cost cutting measures. And thankfully, some companies are putting forth those barriers of, no, we're not going to accept any AI used content. And I'm sure there's ways to prove that it's that you didn't use AI. I know a lot of times some of these companies will require you to submit the source file, like your Photoshop file, for example, the PSD file to show that you actually have different layers in your artwork and that it's not fully AI generated. They did the same with the Rebel Moon contest, where it was design your own alien. And there were a bunch of submissions that were AI generated and they had to get cut out of that top 10 or whatever it was because people pointed out, hey, wait a second, these are AI art. And yeah, they th- thankfully people can tell, you know, I don't know if obviously the tech is going to get better, but so far people can tell pretty much right away whether it's real or not, quote unquote. Hell yeah. It's like, it's very easy to tell. Even in like, there are like some people who are AI, um, who are even making AI generated like 
their like AI assisted generated um like actual like real people photos. Like some people are literally like taking like pick like like certain pictures of themselves and like using AI to enhance it to give you know it's like to add muscles or slightly or or slightly different faces and slightly different toned faces and then pulling it off is like oh this is a picture and then trying to say it's like I'm it's like look at me I'm a I'm a sexy influencer I'm a sexy influencer model person it's like no you're not you're just and put it together for the AI art and that's and it's wrong it's like it's getting it's like getting to the point where people are just being like some people it's just being them being lazy and not trying to put in the effort. Did you see anything. that one, the person that made that fake AI OnlyFans of that one like <laughs> realistic chick and yeah, got that's, some subscribers? <laughs> yeah, that shit. Because mm, um, one of my friends on uh, on one of the, on another server I was talking about, he was like, he pretty much using, he was like working on some adult art and he's, uh, and he had like this dude on there and I'm like, wait a minute, something's wrong with, something's wrong. His like, his other peck is like off and it's not like from like the from like the angle it's like something's wrong about it and i'm just looking around like deeply at it and like this is ai generated he's like what it's like yeah that's ai generated this thing is not oh <laughs> this is it there's something there's some off proportions on this body <laughs> so it's like he's he's toned but it's like but it's like the proportions and the and like the scaling it's like it's very artist it's very art it's a very like somebody like it's like it was pinned on top of a drawing and then someone like put like some kind of realistic filter on top yeah, it doesn't look good yet. I, I'm sure it'll get better as it continues. But again, I just hope that some of these companies continue to take that stance and and doesn't and maybe it'll change as we get older. You know, maybe future generations won't really care. Like they're like, yeah, what's the big deal? Like art is art or whatever. But at least for now, it seems like the front is holding up. Over on the gaming side, Twitch star Kai Sainit. <laughs> maybe you know it better than I do. I've never heard of them. I'm in my 30s. <laughs> who recently became the most subscribed creator on Twitch, organized a real-life giveaway event in New York City's Union Square. So some New York broquettes might have been in the middle of this. Around 2,000 people showed up, leading to chaos and arrests. So CNAT promised, promised to give out hundreds of dollars in gift cards, PCs, and PS5 consoles, despite urging his fans to be safe. The event grew out of control and the NYPD had to respond with a massive police presence. The event did not have a permit and the situation escalated, resulting in injuries to both officers and civilians. CNAT was taken into police custody for quote-unquote safety reasons and possible charges, including inciting a riot. Those are being considered right now. So, typical PS5 fans, am I right? <laughs> okay, one rude. You did that. Literally, you did that as an attack against. You did attack against me. And, uh, uh, trying oh, do to you, do a personal attack. Do you feel and attacked? Interesting. I don't feel attacked. I don't know who this guy. I never. I never really heard of this guy before. But the fact that he was gonna, the fact that you started the thing that you were said you were gonna give away something like that in public, it's like maybe you should have thought about that. It's like that's not something that you can do in a huge public space like that, especially without a permit. You can't just, you know, it's like, I don't, it, 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 it's like the fact of, it's like, there's all these people around and then, and then like the fact that there wasn't a permit and somebody started asking something. And then when there's a huge crowd of people, a lot of other people are going to get up, come up to it and figure out what the hell's going on. Why is there this large crowd? It's like, is something happening? And then a bunch of people who most likely aren't even like his or one of my friends, actually somebody I was talking to told me about this before. And I said, and he, and he had actually a good point about this. He said, how many of those, how many, how much you want to bet that some of the people that actually started the riot were haters or some of his haters? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, I mean, it takes and, very little to start it. Yeah. Especially since he didn't have like a setup, he didn't have like a permit, like those, like we said, no permit. He didn't have like a certain amount of, he didn't have like a thing that said, you know, like would like say certain many people show up or it was like, it'd be different if it was like in a side of building or something. No, it's like an open space and people are, like crowding and all this. So essentially like someone could have somebody who wanted to send some people to say, Hey, go fuck with this guy. So he can, so we can like knock him off the, tw knock him off the top of Twitch or whatever could have been just, you know, could have started some shit. And then this whole thing went down, but you did kind of, it's like, you should really, but as the most popular streamer on Twitch, apparently you need to take, you have to take, you have to, like, he got arrested. You have to take some responsibility for this. He can't just say, you know, like he has to at least apologize and take some, you know, cause you can't, have public open spaces without some kind of control 
in some way, shape, or form. It's not like it's a because you know it's like the level of a lot of people I've seen in these pictures. It's like a protest. It looks like a dang protest going on, and someone got attacked. It's like no, it's a, that's why protesters get attacked because they, you know they're not because you know, when you're protesting, you don't have a permit, you get in trouble for that. It reminded me of that parade in the first Batman film from Tim Burton with the Joker. I'm giving out hundreds of dollars, and then everyone just comes out. And Everybody does it without goes a permit, I'm sure. Bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> then he Joker yeah. gasses him. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I was thinking the same. I was thinking kind of like something similar, but I'm trying to remember what it was from. Where play they had some like prints. <laughs> <laughs> play like a huge ton of people, and then suddenly it's like you know, it's like you have a perv role that you put here. Uh, no. But <sighs> what can you do? If lazy gaming guys, when when they one day get this big, and you can incite a gathering where would you tell your fans your 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 you people to to gather up at okay so i want to you know i would tell them hey everybody go to disney springs yes go to disney springs wearing lazy gaming guy shirts just a ton of you we we have we have an lgg shirt with a logo on it everyone's going to figure out what the heck is this what's going on we're not going to collaborate a meet it's not a collaborated meetup it is just a bunch of people Wearing the shirts, and then it's like we we just you just do whatever for an hour, just roam, just mm. do whatever, roll around these springs for an hour. Somebody get somebody get, and also somebody get me uh, into the Lux Burger easily, real quick, and then we le- and then you know after like being there for like three hours, everybody just leave. And anybody who starts it, and pretty much I would like, and I would like sit and like I would tell everybody you have to park in the same parking lot so I could like watch all these people come in and see. It's like okay, I got like. I got, I got, I see them. I see them. It's like, I don't know them. It's like, who are you? You don't follow me. (laughs) But I would also like, you know, if it was a legit thing, I would host it in like some kind, I would host it somewhere where in like a hotel or like a convention center somewhere where it's not going to be a crate. It's not going to be some huge um, thing. And it's like, it's like, it's in a hotel. So it's like, there's only so, and I'd have to like figure out how to sell tickets. And it's like only so many people can show up. I don't need and then if there are, and if we do have any rowdy, if we do have any rowdy guests, you know, I would sit there and have security because I'm not, I'm not new to setting up, to setting stuff up. I've helped like friends set up panels and also volunteered at a con once. So I know how this stuff goes down and you have to like, it's like, you can't just have a bunch of, you can't just like show up to a convention, have a bunch of fans group up and then expect you to just like be okay with it it's like no unless it's like one picture and then you all have to like disperse afterwards and just hold up a small area of the out, outside the outside the con and just let everybody be like be chill about it it's like no you t- it's like everybody's gathering for a picture you move on and then it's like okay picture's over let's go it's like you don't have to fo- you know you don't have to follow this person around in like a like a mass group and then also if we were ever like a convention people it's like no i need security because i'm not gonna let nobody just come up and just grab themselves a piece of the butt cam. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get harassed. Constantly. I, 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 that's why I was going to say two things. You're brave for personally being out there. One, because of the infamous butt cam, but two, you know, you would just be gathering, you'd be drawing the crowd. So everywhere you'd go, it'd be like Pikmin. <laughs> they would just all be following you anyway. And then if someone does incite a riot, you get a hater, then Disney's going to blame you and you'll be banned from Disney. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I know. Julian wants to take I know. I should do this. At, I should. No, I'm sorry. I should have did this at City Walk. It's fine. No, no, no. I'll do oh, this. But at, now you don't want the Nintendo Land? I'll go to SeaWorld. <laughs> I'll go to SeaWorld. I never touched. I never set foot in there. No one goes in there. It'll the SeaWorld won't complain. They'll be like, oh, crap. We had people. They People actually had to pay in there. I'm like, like I didn't I didn't pay for anybody to come in here. They had to pay on their own. It's like, yeah. you want to come see me? I'm in SeaWorld. Fuck it. <laughs> you get banned from SeaWorld the next year. They announce a Final Fantasy land. <laughs> That's oh, oh, my God. That that would be <laughs> wild and ridiculous. And I'd be, and, but I'd be hella mad. But I also, but also that means I'm only banned in the SeaWorld in, in, in Orlando. Or I could do the one that if I do the one here in Texas, I can get banned from the shitty one. And then I can go to one in Orlando instead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, naive Julian, as if they wouldn't mass tweet the haters again, mass tweet <laughs> <laughs> like the other, all of SeaWorld to get you banned everywhere. <laughs> you know, it'll be a Patreon reward only. <laughs> it'll be that big at that point. It'll be there a Patreon reward only, only certain many tickets. And then all the people on Patreon have to like get, you have to like send me your ID. And so it's like, okay, who, who started this riot? It's like, oh no, I don't know them. They're not on the list of IDs. So get them out of here. There you go. Well, this next one is a list from comicbook.com, and they put up must-watch anime adaptations that surpass their manga, according to, once again, that website. 
And uh, I know normally like Sam or Millennial Mike would be the anime guys to ask, but I'm like, oh, the next best thing, we got Julian here. And so I know maybe you haven't seen all of these, but I was curious if you disagreed or agreed with any of these or which one you felt for sure was the most accurate on these. So just going, going down the list here, Spy X Family, they said he was cohesive and adorable, which outshined the manga. Mob Cycle 100, they called it a stunning animation with character growth, which makes it a must watch. Yu Yu Hakusho, they felt that the anime was fleshed out in its arcs and the original plot plot lines, which elevated it over the manga, made an abyss. They called it dark storytelling with voice acting that set it apart from the manga. Haikyuu, which had ex- exciting sports matches that came to life in animation. Kaon, which had a music-centric series. Obviously, that's going to shine brighter in the anime. Monthly Girls Nozaki. They called it a hilarious comedy, which benefited from the anime. Usagi Drop. And that one is an anime which ends at the right point. I'm assuming different than the <coughs> manga there. Gintama, which is a brilliant parody that surprises viewers beyond the manga. And finally, Hunter x Hunter, which streamlined the storytelling, which enhanced the overall story. So did you agree with most of these? Any of these hard disagree? What do you think? Okay, so Spy X Family, I haven't watched enough of it because it was like, but it was like big last year, this year, last year, last year. It was, it was very, it was big last year. So I see, and it like, it has like a shit ton of memes and it's, it's the, and the, and the like little girl's adorable. So I get that. I understand why people felt that way. Mob Psycho 100, the, the animation is spectacular. And just seeing the character growth in action was a lot more entertaining than the manga, but I never read, but I never really like delved into the manga side, like two chapters. I think Scott and Jock know more about that, more about the manga than I do, but I'm not sure. Yu Yu Hakusho, I 100% agree. I like the, I like the anime more than the manga because I read the manga and I read and I watched the entire series and I like watching it more than reading the manga. Made in the bits, never seen the manga before. I've seen the anime. It's pretty dark. It actually, um, kind of unnerved me watching it watching it once and i even um and there was like a moment that kind of gave me a little gut reaction that almost made me vomit mm. <laughs> from like just the from like the like how gross how the like the gross body horror stuff it's like it got it's like oh no all this shit's happening to a little this little girl and it's awful oh wow. um it's not like it's not like um she's being tortured it's more of just like all this psychological and then like some body stuff going on it was like kind of weird it was weird high cue I have yet to actually experience Haikyuu. It is a mon- it is a shter- series about some high school, middle school. I don't know. They, it's volleyball related. I'm not really interested. Yeah. Usually, some most sports animes, unless they have some ridiculous like visual premise that where they like where like Prince of like the anime Prince of Tennis, where essentially a dude hits a ball into hits a ball. It somehow bounces off the ground, flies into space, hits a sun, breaks off into thousands of other balls. And just and somehow rains down upon Earth, destroying the dinosaurs. And then it zooms out of the other, and then it zooms out of the person out of the opposing player's eye. And all they can do, all they're they're just sitting there stunned of what they see. And then the ball just bounces right past them. That sounds like that baseball one. Yeah, it's like unless you're doing some crazy, stupid shit in your sports anime, you gotta. It's like you, you can't anymore. I think Haikyuu does some things, but it's like, but from what I've seen, it's more realistic than others. K on anime adaptation got a lot it's like music like, yeah it's a music series that would be do better do better in the anime because that you know you can actually hear the songs and everything but it was the first of the cute girl anime it was like the big anime cute girl thing when it came out so a lot of people were obsessed with it so that's why the anime blew up over the manga because it's like the a lot of people didn't know about the manga for k-on until K-On actually came out in in the anime form and it mm. just and it became what we in the anime company anime community describe as the moe blob explosion where all the, with the, all the cute girls with the big eyes and cute girls do high school things or cute girls drive tanks and stupid shit like that is that the one with the big blue hair girl that i always see in the previews catalog they always have statues of her or i could um, be thinking of someone else completely but i always see uh, that and she has like a microphone i think so i'm not sure i'm not sure i'd have to I'd have to see it because her because usually her hair is like dark, it's like black, but like in some figurines and some of the stuff, it's like kind of bluish because you know they have to because they have to distinguish her hair from like the jacket, which is kind of the same color. Um, yeah, I just looked it up. That's that wasn't it, but I did find 
Well, I'll find the name for it later, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. For monthly girls Nozaki, I have no idea what the hell that is. Hatsune Miku. That's what oh I'm no, that's of. different. That, you're thinking ha- no, no, that's Hatsune Miku. That's complete. That's a complete. That's not anime. That's technically like some kind of voice mod. It's like this Japanese voice mod thing that turned into its into an idol. It's so like it's not, a, it's essentially like a fake it's, celebrity. Yeah, it's a it's a, a it's a AI musical program which you can program like music into it and it sings on its own. But it's also using voice voice clips from a actual Japanese voice actress, oh, and it it like it took it it fucking exploded. Yeah, but for monthly girls Nozaki, I have no idea what that is at all. <laughs> Usagi drop. I've seen a couple episodes of that. I'm not sure. I haven't delved in it. That's an older anime. I haven't delved, delved into older ish. I don't think it's that old. Gintama. Yeah, yeah. Comedy animes usually do better as. Do better than the manga sometimes because with the manga because when you're reading, it's like delivery doesn't sometimes the delivery of something doesn't come out the same way as you would actually let's do it. If you actually read someone's joke over actually hearing them say it, it's funnier. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hunter X Hunter. I'm not I have um the feeling towards Hunter X Hunter. I feel like the manga and the anime are practically the same. It's like streamlined storytelling enhances the anime, but it's like to be honest, it's not I don't really feel like it's that much different from reading it over watching it. Okay. Uh, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You, you know, it's like, you might need to save these. You might need to, you know, what I think you should do is one day just covertly have your phone on and show Scott this list and see what he says about it and just have it recorded and then have it as a bonus episode for the, for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> don't he- tell him <laughs> get, get his honest his honest reactions on screen. I don't know. I don't think he wouldn't be <laughs> dishonest on the show, but he might, he, he might, um, fit, you know, the unfilt, let's say, let's get the unfiltered version. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what the unfiltered thought version. Well, I'm putting I'm throwing him under the bus on this. One, <laughs> one that I, I didn't see on this list. And maybe you have your own thing that you think that should be on here. I think like, obviously dragon ball super and all those, I think it goes, I don't think it's vastly better than the manga, and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Like the tor- Tournament of Power manga arc, I thought was better than the animated one. And obviously there's been dips in quality in the animation as the series has gone on, so I wouldn't call that one. But but for sure the one that I think is better than the manga, and mainly because this manga was not widely available, but the setting itself from the show, I mean, it makes the whole show what it is, and I think that's Cowboy Bebop. And I don't know if it's that the, I don't know which came first, the manga or the anime, but if it is the manga that came first, then I'll look that up real quick. I think Cowboy Bebop should have been on this list. Oh yeah. Cowboy Bebop. If it ha- I'm not sure if it had, a, I don't remember if it had a manga or not, but Cowboy Bebop's like, well, I don't know if it has a manga. I'm not sure if it could even like compare to in any way, shape or form. And then the only other sh- the only other one that I can think of on top of my head, which is fitted more from having an anime than a, ma- than a manga is um my hero academia like my hero academia in the first half of it gave it a little bit more world building in the anime because it could like add some filler content that would actually like help that gave gives it a lot more interesting things over the uh, manga which has to like focus on certain things but other than that the only uh, um i think now no no because unfortunately because like there's only one other manga that i read religiously that did better than um the actual show did and um and of course it's the pokemon manga but the pokemon manga doesn't count because it doesn't follow the same exact thing as the show does the pokemon manga is the pokemon mangas are their own entirely separate entities which technically if they use that for the anime for a while they would have done a lot better but yeah. you know the end but near the end of the ash part of the anime i was um actually more i was surprised of how of the stories they were telling and how it looked it's like a lot of people hated the sun how sun and moon looked, but i actually thought it was a nice refreshing pace change of pace of the of because they could actually do a lot more fluid animations with some of the fight with some of the fights and different things but they weren't because it wasn't a it wasn't the whole thing of ash collects gym badges goes fights the tournament luke gets his ass kicked no it it was more centralized as a adventures of him and the random friends he was making in like a mm-hmm. school setting and then near the end of it it got back into we're gonna have a tournament and he won that and then in the next series it was like he even he did even better and he had like other and they said let's make this again except you know make it a much shorter cast 
and it worked out because they could have adventure. You could still have your built your adventures, and it's like it's not filler because technically, you know, like all of it. It's like the following the plot of the video games never really did the manga any favors and anime any favors. After a while, it's like make your own story. It's like these, it's like sometimes some of these shows, if you have something open ended like Pokemon, you have to make your own story. It's like, but you don't usually get that outside of other things. Like K on could have made their own stories because it's like, it's just girls in a band. What are they going to, and then like whatever high school Avengers they, they get, whatever high school nonsense they get into. And that's what happened with the anime because it's like we can just kind of put them in whatever silly settings. It's like silly settings. Like they're in a band and they're, at, if they need money, so they got to fucking dress up like, stupid dress up like dress up in stupid costumes to earn money and wash cars or something stupid i don't know <laughs> so i just looked up the cowboy bebop anime and it looks like it was originally created for the cartoon and then they did release a manga afterward and they released another one right before the anime premiered but it was created for television so i think that takes it off the list i don't think that might be why they didn't include it because it wouldn't really count but yeah mm -hmm. you're right the pokemon adventures manga i'm especially fond of that because red and that chooses bulbasaur as his first pokemon and he takes <laughs> it all the way to the end with the elite four and the championship battle against blue where blues blues such a <laughs> he's not as threatening at all as gary was in the anime so yeah. he's down to his last pokemon which is a charizard and red's like well i still got three but let's end this the way we started it let me and he chooses venusaur and so it's venusaur versus charizard his Venusaur is so trained up that the Charizard's blasting it with flamethrower and Venusaur doesn't even move. It just takes it, doesn't even look bothered by it. <laughs> and then he fucking that mind whips dope. it. I'm like, God <laughs> damn. So fucking Yeah, that dope. was really that was a really dope. That was a really dope moment. Also in that manga, Giovanni's a fucking monster. He literally, like, strategically throws his Pokeballs the same time Redwood to literally like see literally like break them. And so he couldn't use certain Pokemon. He could only use the one that was already out. And I think it was just Pikachu and like something else. And it was like, he was, and it was crazy. It was crazy. And then like, there's like a three and then like they fuse the legendary birds together. Yes. And, it, and then like half of the gym leaders are fucking corrupted team rocket members. It was, a, it was so good. It's like, oh, oh, I wish the anime had better plots than this instead of just the gener generic cutie cutter Ash and friends get lost. They encounter a Pokemon or somebody who has the Pokemon of the, the, the day because this is the point. You know, the point of the show is to show off the show off the Pokemon and how cute they are. And look, go buy and go buy the video game, buy the plushies, and buy the plushies and buy the plushies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully one day. I know the closest we ever got was I think Pokemon Generations, or I forgot what it was, where they had like red and blue. Except in that one, he does choose Charmander, which is a shame, and they changed it. But I mean, that's probably as close as we're gonna get for now. But I'll, I'll always have the Pokemon Adventures manga. I own it in, in two forms, in the individual volumes, and then in the compilation that they came out with. Picked that up at my local comic shop back in, when I worked there, and it, it was a good buy, man. I love visiting that old anime or the old manga, I should say. It was real good. And uh, keeping it on anime talk, the live action adaptation of One Piece is set to premiere on Netflix at the end of this month. Well, series creator Ichiro Oda had two major demands for the project. Keeping the Straw Hat, crew's backstories unchanged. I guess that's the name of the crew. You can tell I'm unfamiliar with One Piece. So keeping yes. the Straw Hat crew's backstories unchanged and preserving their unique abilities. So the show promises thrilling fights and will bring the manga's East Blue Saga to life. And for those unfamiliar with the series, it follows Monkey D, Luffy's quest to become the King of Pirates and find the legendary One Piece treasure. <laughs> not no large demands there i mean <laughs> it just wants the hey, backstories um, and powers well if you want well because that's the one thing that a lot of these adaptations do they change around some of the they change around characters and some of their ability and some of the stuff because they don't want to put any effort into the anime into animating anything or doing certain things and also like a lot of people who a lot of it's like it's the, the bigger the hollywood actor is in some of these things that they they get a lot of the hollywood actors like i don't want to have the stupid like there's a character like the character Usopp. It's like it's like some actor's gonna be like, I don't want a prosthetic giant prosthetic nose on my face or a prosthetic nose on my face. And like someone's like, or like whoever plays Nami's like, I don't want to wear this tiny mini skirt. It's not, it's too revealing and my boobs around. I don't like I don't want to do this. I don't have to. It's like Mystique in the X Men in the in the X Men in the la in like the last few X Men movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Jen it's Darren Adowski's wife, Jennifer something, isn't it? But she's like, but after like Jennifer after Lawrence, like two, Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. After two movies, she's like, I don't want to have to put the blue on my face all the time. That's and then that, and then they made an excuse for her not to have it, and like, 
in uh X Men Days of, Days of Future Past, and then and then and also the when Phoenix, they came yeah. up with the Apocalypse movie, they just so they had her for like in there for two seconds, and they're like, okay, so you're not going to do it. We'll just you know we're going you know it's like we'll just not have you in the movie. It's like we could just she's <laughs> like I don't want to be part of the I don't want to be doing this again. So it's like okay, we'll just kill you off the game of the movie. She was also like, getting okay. pretty big then, like as far as her stardom. She yeah, was, so she was she, outgrowing like, those I'm, films. Yeah, so she's like, I don't want to do this anymore. So it's like, okay, but you have, to, but you know, we have you for this movie. It's like, okay, we need you for, we have you for the movie. And it's like, okay, we have to have her for this movie, but we don't want her, but we don't want to have to pay her too much. So just kill her, <laughs> <laughs> do it, murder, kill her, just get her off the screen. <laughs> you know, screen. She complains about the blue makeup. She does, she complains about the blue makeup. We're trying to, we're trying to keep, the, we're trying to make this money, make movies, so make keep keep making money off of this, and because Days of Future Past was good, and they're like, we want to keep making money, and it's like, and then you know, Apocalypse, they drop the ball, and then it's just. As soon as they dropped the ball, it was, t- you know, you know, Marvel, Mar- Disney Marvel came in and swooped up, swooped it up and, and stole it back and stole it back like fucking, um, like it was an Infinity Stone or something. And then, you know, now they haven't done shit with anything X-Men related since they got them. So I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> well, that's fine because they're going to fucking ruin it anyway. <laughs> it wasn't. It was fine the way yeah, you it know, was. At this, point, at this point, like, at, like every fucking Marvel discussion we've ever had, I've ever had on this channel since freaking ever had with you or anybody else who asked me about who, who doesn't really care for marvel i'm after infinity war i've been done at the infinity war saga i've been done it's it has it has no i have no interest in what's going on all the like i someone in my family ends up wanting it's like we want to see this movie and then they and then i end up stuck on there on sunday watching it and i'm like and i just keep <laughs> my mouth shut because i want to <laughs> complain because i want to complain about i want to complain but it's like i didn't really watch some next black panther movie and i'm like this is it's all right, but it's not the like it's not the first movie, and it's not because of it's not because of you know the actor. It's not because of the actor. Yeah, I just, knew you'd see it. You know, it's like they <laughs> shouldn't have. Tr- it's like they already had most of this movie. In pro- I bet they had this movie in production before they even before his even like before COVID started in his death. So it's like, and then so they had to scrap anything that they had with him, and then ma- and then continue making this movie because it's like they already hired all these people and all the people who work for it. They're gonna they had to make that movie. I don't blame anybody who was in that movie for anybody in that movie for acting because you know they they were already it's like we have to like they have to they were they're contractually obligated to do it even if even if it was around it sucks and I can and you can see that in the story because it's like yeah female Black Panther I love it it's great it's fun it's you know it's a good idea but it, this isn't um but you know we just saw well, they just had a movie and then they you know I don't know if that came out after before or after the Thor movie but it's like we just had this it was before it, it, yeah it was kind of yeah it, it, so oh so it was before the Thor movie so that's what so I had a feeling that's like like I didn't I saw like the Thor movie once again bootleg so and I said Why oh would this, you see it <laughs> because once because somebody because someone in my there are people in my life who want me to still see Marvel movies with them. So what? I mean, I, Why does that it, affect you? <laughs> because I was there and I was bored and it was two in the morning. <laughs> Man, I, I can do much better things than watch an MCU movie. At I could have. I guess I could have. Yes, I could have slept and saved and saved those brain cells. But I also wasn't paying attention to the movie. To be honest, I was also kind of playing other video, I was playing like fucking video games at the same time. So I so pretty much I see like I hear like Thor things going on, but I'm too busy fucking playing fi- playing still playing fighting games and shit. So it's like I hear that, but all I can hear in the background is you know, Nightmare and Soul Calibur swinging around his giant sword and just murdering people while I'm murdering stuff while I'm kill, kill while I'm fighting like random dudes online from different from different time zones. <laughs> yeah, you you just proved right there that was the the Marvel pressure, the MCU pressure that I was talking about like a month ago. That it, it, this was with Palpa Kelly. I was like, where there's this there was this phenomena that people were pressured into watching and liking the MCU movies because their friends and family were also into it. And I felt it firsthand, as I've said, because I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't like the MCU. I don't want, you don't like the MCU. What do you mean? You didn't see the Avengers too. And it'd be like a big, big fucking deal. Like I just didn't fucking see it. Nowadays, no one gives a shit really. But back then, you know, I'd get fucking crucified over that. Yeah. But let, let me, um, go send it back to, uh, the conversation on one piece. Cause I went on a tangent again, but that's what I'm good at. <laughs> So for if since they're gonna keep the characters this way, it's like okay, keep the character looks, keep their backstories and their unique abilities. Okay, we're not gonna change that. That's a good start, and it's thrilling, thrilling fights. Well, because because of the so a lot of these characters have um crazy abilities, especially oh, well, mostly it's just Luffy in the beginning, and like so, and maybe if they since they're doing the East Blue, they're gonna get to a character who's a pirate who also splits himself into pieces. Yeah, I think it's all in the are going to be the more difficult characters to um 
and they're going to be the ones who are mostly going to be CG animated a bunch of times. Yeah. And then everybody else is just going to be like, it's going to be, it's like you have a dude who just does sword things, who uses like three swords and keeps one of his mouth. It's not going to be very difficult to do some interesting things with that. And then it's another girl who, and then it's a girl who just uses a staff. It's not going to be hard to make fights. And then it's another dude who, and then one dude, it's like Usopp who uses a, who uses a freaking slingshot not hard. You just got to make some fancy special effects to make explosions and shit. And then, and then Sanji is just, you know, he's a person who uses his feet to kick. So you just got to get a decent martial art person. So you just get a, so if it's not an actor who does the martial arts themselves, you just get somebody, you get a stunt who can just do, who knows how to do one of those martial arts, which just kicking. It's not really, it's like, you don't have to outside. Uh, we haven't gotten to the crazy levels of shit yet with the people with the, with the metal hands and the, and the <laughs> giant and the smoke and the smoking arms and the flames and the, and the flames and the black smokes and all the crazy stupid shit. We haven't gotten there yet. And the and the sand powers. We haven't gotten there yet. East Blue is very digestible. Af- but after East Blue, it's gonna start becoming a lot harder for some people to like accept some things about One Piece. It's gonna get more and more. It's gonna get more and more cuckoo, crazy anime levels of stuff going on. And I want to. And when they start, and if they do, and after this movie, we're gonna see how they do with the basic levels of one piece stuff when it comes to the more difficult things in the next arcs in the next arc movies if they do make a next arc movie it's if it's good if the first one's good they're gonna have to it's like oh crap they're gonna put this over the corner they have to step that shit up because there's no way oda's gonna let them change anything yeah and i'll be checking it out i'll be checking it out myself too because out of out of curiosity i'm not a one piece guy i've seen like the movie and like the first three episodes and that was about it but uh yeah i mean i Netflix is very hit or miss, and when they when it is a hit, it's good, right? So I, I will definitely check it out, give it a shot, and it sounds like from what I was saying with Millennial Mike, what he was saying is that it's oddly optimistic among anime fans because they're normally like fuck a- action adaptations, but for some reason, this one everyone's like, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> so it seems yeah. like fans are somewhat on board. Except, you know, if a, a one fan we know in particular and oh, a couple course. other fans because, you know, it's on Netflix, so it's already deemed as garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that when, when he does like it, though, he will just buy the DVD or whatever instead. Mm. He'll track it down hey. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, just, you know, sneak, you know, just get the DVD and suddenly just, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it's like, this is a DVD. It's here. Good. You should watch it. <laughs> 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 or, you know, when I come, or if, if it's already out in, and it comes in a DVD form and I just kind of take it to Florida. And then when he's stuck and then, you know, it's like, we're stuck in a Disney hotel or something and he can't leave. And I force him to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a couple of horror news bits, I guess. One of which is a Disney one, but this one is one of my favorite horror films and, and given a bit of a tribute to William Friedkin, William Friedkin, who is the visionary filmmaker known for revolutionizing horror with the exorcist. He has passed away at the age of 87. Full Life, the exorcist based on William Peter Blatty's best-selling book, became a phenomenon when it released, and it received 10 Academy Award nominations, which is a historic feat for a horror film, including a nomination for Best Picture. So William Friedkin leaves behind his wife, Sherry Lansing, and two children, Jackson and Cedric Friedkin. I mean, I got to tell you, man, this is one of my favorite horror films. It still scares me to this day. Not as much as now Hereditary. That one took its place, but The Exorcist is just so well filmed. Is this is this one that was too heavy for you? Have you ever watched The Exorcist? The original one, right? Yeah, the first one. I've seen The Original Exorcist. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it is before, like, these movies. It was. It is an older one, so it's before these movies got really ridiculously. It's like it is the first of the like movies where it kind of fucks with you, in the where where it's like and it's not like campy, or, or full of jump scares. There's only like two in yeah. the whole film. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing I'm not a big fan of uh, horror movies these days. It's like they try to jump scare you. No, no, no. A good horror movie needs to give you something that unner and unnerves yes. you, and then when you show something and then you show it on screen, mm-hmm. you don't need to have it pop up to freak you out you need to have it you it's like you have to have something that's going to it's like that's why as a kid it's like as when you're younger and like unknowing that's why the jason and freddie movies kind of scare people because we don't know that they're dumb slasher fix yet because we we just know that they're like scary movies of scare of this scary dude just tracing people and it's like that's and or like right at 13 you know especially like um 
Halloween. It's like he's not just murdering people. He's like stalking these kids. And it's like that that scared me as a kid. Yes, I grew up and learned that that wasn't funny. That wasn't scary. But like the movies like The Exorcist, where you, where, you know those get those get you. The Poltergeist, right? Yeah, PG yeah, thirteen you know, Poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It was rated G. I'm sorry. When it came out, it was rated G, and they hadn't made PG-13 yet. And then when it <laughs> when they made PG-13, they finally bumped it. Yeah, because it's like the Poultry Guys was rated. P- it's like fucking what? It's like it was rated PG. <laughs> PG. Like, that's no, what it was. Yeah. That's it's like no, but that it's like no, that's bad. But luckily they they fixed that. Thank you. It's like they fixed that. Good job, Hollywood. <laughs> Good job, Hollywood. But but you know, The Exorcist was. Did when did it come out again? I'm like, I think it was like 79. Yeah, because I remember back in the early, back in the, back in like, remember back in like the 60s and, and 70s, there weren't really good horror movies. Most 19, of the horror movies were, so it were like rehashes of, yeah, it was like back in the early days, back in like the 60s, it was rehashes of them, Hollywood trying to, back in the 60s, it's Hollywood trying to relive the musical glory days because they were, they had, because freaking like back in like the late, it, like back in the early 19 back in the early 60s mary poppins made a shit ton of money and then they're suddenly like uh, and like so did my fair lady in the in hollywood's like oh we can just go back in musicals and horror movies were based on b movies and it's like universal universal like making a remaking fucking the the creature from the black lagoon and it's like garbage <laughs> or something <laughs> so horror until the exorcist came out i don't think horror movies were horror movies they came back in a certain prime level of like quality right outside of like really stupid schlocky shit i mean horror movies go back into levels of schlocky shit for a while and slasher movies and shit the exorcist is it is a good it's a really good movie it gets you know everybody tried to copy it for years after that um the exorcist even had to make us had to cut make another movie to come back from it all, all the, the the one thing about like the ex, the one thing i remember for the exorcist is just like freaking is like the 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 vomit scene that, that gets everybody. <laughs> that gets everybody. It's like the girls. It's like, it's like, oh my God, what the fuck? <laughs> and, on the fuck cards, and then like, uh, he's like, and, like uh, uh, and he, and it cuts like, the scene. Tied, the and, <laughs> tied to the bed and it's like, and she's like, just, it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little, I, you know, it's like, it's like I, I'm sitting here rooting for the priest. I'm a little Christian boy rooting for the priest. Like, go, oh, Mister Priest, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, good stuff. Very good stuff. And like you said, it it may have elevated the genre for sure. I mean, there's been great horror films since then, like Alien, Aliens. There's now an Exorcist sequel coming out, which I don't know. I like I it. The effects look look pretty good, you know, for what it is. And this time, there's two possessed little girls, and it's it's a direct sequel to the first one. More or less, I'm assuming ignoring parts two and three, not that it needed to, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that those movies were pretty inconsequential. And it comes out this year. They, I think they're calling it Exorcist. I got to look up the the actual thing to it. But yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. I just hope it's not full of jump scares, which it seems like it will be, because that's what the trailer showed. Yeah, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to do the thing that the ring's been doing for you that they've been doing since the ring. It's just like it's just like little girl, little girl, little girl like suddenly it's like it's like oh no, my body twists and moves in weird ways. It's like it's like it's like, it's like I have a contortionist and like and then it's like and then it just jumps up your face and like it's like no, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, something not quite as scary more all ages is Disney's Haunted Mansion, which is now in theaters. And director Justin Simon expressed interest in adapting the iconic Captain EO attraction. So despite the movie's box office performance and reception, Simon hints at the possibility of a Haunted Mansion sequel with plenty more story and mysteries left to explore. (laughs) I don't think he's going to get any fucking more films after the way this one performed. Scott saw the Hunter Mansion movie. He told me it was good. I haven't seen it yet myself. Well, he, he knew he was going to like it before he even I knew saw he was going to. I was going to like it, but that's the thing. I'm not, I need someone who's not a theme park, who's not a fan of theme parks to come see, to see this movie. I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my roommate with me to go see it when I, when we get, when we actually have a day off together or at least a time close to where we can go see it at the same time. I can get his reaction because he knows, he doesn't know anything about Haunted Mansion as a, um, as a ride. He has no nostalgia for it. He doesn't under he he has no idea of what what uh, what to expect, and that's going to give me an idea of what this movie of his reaction to this movie is going to 
be what the real reaction of this movie is any any critique I give to this movie because I'm going to have a hard time critiquing this movie on the first time I watch it because I'm going to be sitting there looking for references. Yeah, and I heard it, that that's what it mainly has. Like my brother saw it and he was I was like maybe I should wait for the Disney Plus release and he's like yeah definitely wait because we have access through my parents and mm-hmm. I was like oh, okay he's like yeah it's got a lot of Easter eggs to the ride he's like but if you haven't been on the ride then there's not really a whole lot to go off of Matt was saying that as well and and something similar at least to it and I'm like okay well it sounds like the movie I, I know my brother I trust my brother's opinion he and I really more or less align on movie tastes so I'm like okay it sounds like it's a not a big deal if you miss it when it came out in theaters, wait for it to release later. And it seems like a lot of people are doing that. They're taking that approach. Yeah. Also because of, um, a lot of people are taking that approach with a lot of movies right now because of the strike going on. A lot of people are not even bothering to go into the theater are pretty much like, I'm not going into the theater because, because, you know, it's like these people, it's like, it's like, you know, but you know, so, you know, so, you know, uh, well, that's tell that to age. Barbie or Oppenheimer, man. Those movies are yeah. That's what that's what that's what I tell people. It's like, what? It's like, why did you go see Barbie and Oppenheimer? Then it's because, it, it, you know, and then and then some, and then someone I was talking to about this. They said, you know, it's like, oh, it already it it you know they already made this before that before the strike happened. It's like so was this movie exactly and all the other movies that are coming the movies that are coming out in the next few months. It's like mm-hmm. these movies are already done. They've been they're just in the editing stage at this point. And any editors who are still sticking around for that, it's like I get like maybe I don't know. I don't know what's like it. I don't know what you know that situation is because I've been paying attention to this too hard. At first, I was, but then I kind of just fit, but then I fizzled out because I know because I unfortunately had more thing other things to worry about in life. I'm not saying it's a. I'm not saying I'm not you know I don't support them. It's just that I have you know it's like I've already said my I've already said how I feel about it and I'm moving on <laughs> and I'm moving on. It's like well until some more de- until some more crazy developments come out besides the fact of you know the things that we know that you know all these companies are just gonna sit lie and wait and lie and wait and see how these how all these actors and um, editors and all these other people who work on these movies are gonna how long they're gonna wait until they become broke and all that all that horrible shit i'm not gonna i you know it's like this might besides i barely go to the movies this much any, that much anymore anyway since it's not because of like i'm because of covid things or i don't like seeing movies it's just i don't usually have time to go see a movie unless i really want to like with spider-verse i saw like i saw spider-verse i saw a couple other movies i wanted to see but some of these movies don't really grab me enough to actually go see it unless I have someone who for someone I have to do. So like if I have kids or something that make me go see one of these children's movies. Right. Yeah. It gets harder as we get older. That's for sure. Well, there's and a then, movie um, that, yeah, go ahead. Um, about this captain EO thing. I have, <laughs> like, how would that I, even fucking work? <laughs> okay. One, they're obviously going to get some Michael Jackson look like person for it. They have to, it's not a choice. That it's, sucks. It's not man. a choice. And then the, also, it sucks because there's no way to bring him back for this because you know he's dead. But yeah. the other thing is, this movie was a collaboration between Michael Jackson, George, George Lucas, Lucas right? yeah. and Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> yep. You, if you're going to make this movie, you have to consult yes. both both of them about this movie because technically, the the Lucas side just made. The alien, the iconic weird alien looks, but Francis Ford Coppola directed that whole shit. <laughs> he was the director. I, I say do an animated. If you're gonna do it, do an animated version. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you should technically do. If they're gonna do it, do it animated. Don't do it. You know, that's actually a good idea. Do it animated because we can't. You you can't have this movie like because like if you've seen Captain EO, and for those of you out there who haven't. Look up the Captain EO attra- look up the Captain EO attraction on YouTube. The whole entire thing is up- the whole entire no- the like the video of it is uploaded onto YouTube like without any like ro- it's not it's without any like ride fo- without anybody like it's there's no like someone recording it off footage from the ride or anything. No, they uploaded the entirety of it after after Michael Jackson death they up you know like they uploaded it onto onto Vivo or whatever as like something you could listen to because it has his it has music it, there's an original, original song music, in that, that yeah. Yeah, it has original as original piece of so- original song in that that he ma- that that he made for it. So they uploaded that shit. So just look up Captain. Just look up the Captain EO or We Are Here to Change the World is the name of the song, and then you can get like the song bits with the little like, and then it looks like a Michael Jackson music video with the cra- <laughs> right. with the crazy people in the suits and the singing and like there's this one ra- and there's this one random tent- one random like wired woman with like robot shit and it's a it's and like and like. 
apparently during the filming of it, Michael Jackson, like there were these like dudes with like with like rubber whips and shit, and Michael Jackson accidentally got slapped by one of them. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite like, part of that ride, because it's anyone unfamiliar, it's a 3D ride, kind of like Honey I Shrunk the Kids, where you sit in a theater and the theater kind of moves, sprays you with water, and then you just have the movie playing in front of you. And yeah, I, I always laughed because I didn't expect it when he turns the robots, these wired robots that pretty much look like the Borg. He turns them into like these feminine men dancers <laughs> and they come out like, Ooh, like that. They make that noise. And I'm like, I, even the first time I saw it, I'm like, that's fucking hilarious. And you see them dancing. Yeah, and then all the, and the, like all the other people around there suddenly get like these random multicolored suits and shit. <laughs> multicolored <laughs> and I'm like, suit, what, like, what's he doing going into other planets and fucking changing their culture and lives? Yeah. <laughs> and apparently he's like a shit captain anyway. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, dude, stop being a captain. Just being a performer. Cause clearly that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this last bit of news is from a movie I would have loved to have seen, and that is Jay Oliva, who is a DC animation director and Snyderverse storyboarder, revealed to Inverse Rick Famuyiwa's Flash movie and how it was going to be a series of film, just, films just like Aquaman. And he said, quote, I think all of those films, they were planning to be trilogies, end quote. Famuyiwa's movie was intended to lay the groundwork for Zoom as the main antagonist with Professor Zoom manipulating events from the future to disrupt Barry's life. So Zoom's influence would have extended to other Justice League films as well, and these original plans offer a glimpse of what could have been in Zack Snyder's vision for the DCEU. The storyboard artist added, quote, At the end of Zack's, Zack's Dark Side Quadrilogy, or whatever, we would have ended up with a Justice League Unlimited version of the Snyderverse. And then you flip it. You do Flashpoint Paradox, Everybody whose friends are now enemies, and it's a world that you don't want to live in. You can reboot the universe and introduce a new cast that way. Because after 10 years, the actors need to go on to something else. End quote. This is something that people really didn't realize, and this is we point this out all the time, is that if Warner Brothers wanted their rebooted universe, by now they could have had it. Because the Flash movie, I think, was set to release in 2020. Obviously, that would have changed with COVID. But by now, you would have had that final Flash film released with the reboot. It would have been a Flashpoint-like story. And I say Flashpoint-like because Zack said on Vero it was going to be something better than Flashpoint. We know he doesn't like <laughs> Jeff Johns. And and so they would have rebooted in their own way with Warner Brothers' cast. Like, do whatever characters you want now. We've told our story. And instead, they've gone into this other crazy direction. And that's, people are now speculating, like, what would have Professor Zoom done in these Snyder movies? Like, people are even analyzing old trailers from Zack Snyder's Justice League, where there's one screenshot where it looks like when Barry's running, someone other, someone else comes at him as fast and seems to tackle him or change his trajectory just a little bit. So some think that even in the Snyder cut, there might have been hints at Professor Zoom manipulating events. It's like, reverse, it's like, I keep calling, I forget. It's like, his name is Professor Zoom. I keep calling him Reverse Flash. <laughs> yeah, basically, Reverse Flash. I mean, it's the, you know, it's like, I forget. That's the same character. It's interesting. And then also, like, the part, the point he made at the end where it's like, because after 10 years, the actors need to go on to something else. That's a good point. Because a lot of the, because like, it's like, you don't, it's like, uh, be, imagine act being the, being the same, having to act the same character all the time. You don't get anything. It's not like TV actors. It's not right. like TV actors who it's like TV actors who do like certain things they do like the same. They say, and even they, at least the, uh, TV actors, they get to do other things. Like they get to do other things. It's not like the people who all the people who are in friends that get to act in other things at the same time, you know, but like you can do the same character for a movie. And a lot of people are, are going to get like, a lot of people are going to get tired of it. I'm trying to remember the movie off the top of my head where they made it. And then, and then it's all oh, right. The twilight movies. As soon as they made the as soon as they made the first one, they immediately went to the second one, and then the third, and then the next. After, I'm sorry, after the second one, they immediately went to the third. Money, they were already like a pre production for the second, and then when the second movie came out, they immediately went into filming the third, and then the next, and then the one after that. It was fucking crazy. It's like, and then by the time they were done, it's like most of the actors are fucking exhausted of of being these characters, and it's a good. And then it's like you get to see like. Kirsten Stewart actually be in other movies and actually be an interesting character because you know it's like <laughs> well, technically Bella's not an interesting character. Bella's kind of kind of mid. So and then Chris Kirsten Stewart she gets to actually go into other movies and actually show that she can act. You don't want but like some it's like a lot of people you don't want to be the same character for like years and years and years. Everybody complains like why couldn't we keep 
you know, why couldn't the first Batman be in all the other Batman movies? Because not everybody wants to stay that same character. It's like because like we enjoy these characters, but unless but unless but unless you're voice acting a character, nobody wants to. You know, because voice acting is easy. It's a lot easier. All you do is get to a booth and you get to a booth, read a bunch of lines for a few hours, read a bunch of lines for a few hours, and then you get to leave. As an actor, you get you're stuck. It's like you could be sitting in a prosthetic in a suit with a prosthetic ass for like hours, <laughs> not doing a damn thing, and it's and then you and the, not doing a damn thing because they can't get this one scene right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like and it's like okay, we want to film this. It's like um, I remember um, The Hobbit. So in The Hobbit, it's like they had to put the dudes who were in. In the dwarf costumes, they had to painstakingly put them in those costumes every day. They were acting, and then sometimes they wouldn't even be, they wouldn't even get to their scene. And then it's like, then, and then it's like they're like, okay, I guess we're. It's like, and they got paid to sit in those hot ass fucking hot ass fucking makeup chairs and the hot makeup and do nothing and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's definitely that's something that's one of the reasons why Bautista didn't want to do Guardians anymore. It's because of the makeup. You were just talking about Jennifer Lawrence. But yeah, there's a lot of that. It, it is tough. And I'm, we're not saying that voice acting is not as easy as, you know, he was sort of making it sound. It's definitely rough, but for it's actors rough, themselves, but like, this, but like, it's rough, but like acting in person and being and yeah. having like take hours and time away from your life. It's like, it's kind of, it can be kind of, it's kind of brutal. Yeah. And that's, again, that's the nice thing that of this, of his Snyderverse is that he had an exit plan already. Like this is, here's all of the films we're going to make that I'll, that I'll be a part of. And then this is the end of them. It ends with the flash and cyborg and green lantern. I think were the last three films that were coming out. And so the flash was going to reboot everything. The WB can do what they want. Maybe Zach would have stayed on as a producer. I don't know, but they've since gone yeah, he could, into and a he crazy stop, direction. Yeah. And then he also gets to stop making some of the, uh, stop working on super movies, gets to work on something different. Exactly. Like, something different because um, it's like, I think that's, you know, a lot of people say like, Oh, George Lucas just sold Star Wars Disney so he made money. It's like, no, because technically I bet George Lucas was sick and tired of making Star Wars stuff. <laughs> yeah, he was tired of the fans. He said that before. He can't make them happy. And yeah. and they were they they were constantly going after George and now they're going after Disney and they're like, bring back George. And it's like, no, you guys hated that guy. It's like, <laughs> and, it's, and it's like everybody it's like everybody go, and then I love I love it. It's like we're gonna go after Disney because they're they're the ones who ruined it. It's like, no, it's because Disney kept hiring multiple Disney ruined it by hiring different directors every single movie because they because it's like the second movie didn't you know, this movie didn't do as hot as we wanted to, so we're gonna hire other directors and finish the that's the second movie. This because you know JJ Abrams had this plot. We didn't want to. We didn't want him to freaking have this long winded, long winded plot for this. You know he's not giving us what we want. Let's right. Let's get rid of him. And then they hire this other guy. These other people. And it's like uh, this movie didn't. Do, a lot of fans didn't like this movie. Didn't like this movie as much. And like the reception's not doing so well. Let's get rid of you and then hire the people. And it's like hey, these Game of Thrones people could do well. And then they ruin it. And then they completely one hundred percent turn it into like this. It's like fan fiction garbage mm -hmm. <laughs> because I finally saw it. I'm like, Oh no, they actually did what I <laughs> thought they were going to do. And I was hoping they wouldn't do this cliche. And so they did it. And then it's like, Oh boy, Oh boy, this didn't turn out so well. It's like, it, it's like, Oh great. It's rough to be a star Wars fan. And like, I, and yes, I blame this. Yes. I blame the people, the people in the Disney board who did not give, who didn't, who had the say of who these directors are, because when you change directors in the middle of these movies, it's going to change the vision. It's like, you can't just, it's like, you can't just take the same thing and then kind of like have a director, like kind of like rearrange it because then it's like, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same vision. It's ridiculous. It's like me. It's like literally me start. It's like having me start a let's play of one game and then having Scott go in and do it. It's changed how the, right. how the playthrough <laughs> is going because I do certain things in one way and then Scott does it differently. It's gonna, it's not gonna, it's not going to be the same. Well, we're fighting, at least I'm fighting for some of that vision to come back and some of those plans, and we will continue to follow it, of course, very closely every single week on here. Well, let's head into the final portion of today's show. It is the bro Kept Block, what Julian and I have been up to since you last heard us. So, Julian, what have you been watching, playing, reading? What's been making you broke this week? Broke this, what's making you broke this week is I'm finally, after... It being out for two months, I'm almost two months now. I'm finally like no, two months. It came out in June. I'm finally like at the end of the week. I'm finally gonna be buying Street Fighter Six. Oh, nice! I, did, I, I was gonna. I said I should probably wait till I get uh, another system where I should see if my or, or I should try and test if my um PC can handle it. It's like I'm gonna. I can see if my PC can handle it, but also I'm gonna 
Still, I'm still gonna buy if I don't get it on PC. I'm gonna buy it on PS4. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on because oh, it's on PS4. You know, it's like, yeah, it's on PS4 because it's on PS4 and Xbox One. You could just because and then also you could just transfer the, in like both 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 versions let you transfer the data onto the onto the next generation oh, anyway, nice. next console anyway. So I'll just do that. I'm just gonna do that because I'm I'm tired of not being a part, of, not being being the only fighting game enthusiast who hasn't touched this game. <laughs> it's starting to it's getting on my nerves. Other than that, I have been I just like at the end of like the week before the end of uh. July, me and Jacques were went to were with some friends, and we went to get we went to this went to this uh game fest in Austin, which essentially it's like retro game it's like this retro game fest and that um comes along. I forget the name. I'm honestly forgetting the name of it, and I should be ashamed that I forgot the name of this. And they because I was there for three days. Um, <laughs> give me a second because but while I'm trying to remember the name, I can still talk about it. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it immensely. Because it, it was nice to see all these like, it was like it was like a convention only for video games, like Ooh. literally only, kind of like PAX classic East or game something. Fest. Yeah, classic game fest. There we go. That's the name. Of it. So was that um, in Austin or? It was in Austin. It's the second or third. It's like apparently one of the biggest ones outside of the one in outside of like the one in the Northeast, which is a uh, too many games expo. Which is apparently yeah. the biggest one. I like me and my friend, my friend who we were we were there for wanted to. It's like we're, both of us are like we should try and do that one day because that shit's um that shit's dope. But yeah, it was a fun time with we got we got got an Airbnb out there so we could like get food and have our make our own food and stuff so we could save a little bit of money. I didn't get a ton of games. I did sell some. I did sell like a couple of my retro stuff that I wasn't touching anymore. Oh nice. That I had no interest in, and I made about like. Three hundred dollars on them, on all of them combined. I I was expecting a little bit. I would pick a little bit more on some of them, but I but then I look. But the problem is, going out there, I learned a lot of information, like GameCube games. A lot of people hold on to these things. They make a lot of money, but you can't. You know, it's like you gotta sell, you gotta get rid of those things before these before these remakes come out. Because once these remakes come out, or like a lot of people who don't want like who needed money, money. Uh, like just started getting rid of them, and now all these people have all these copies of these like advanced games, and nobody. And now the va- and the value for them is going down. Yeah, like F Zero GX. It's like it's a high selling thing, but a lot. Of, but I ended up keeping it because it's like there's no point in me selling this because I'm not going to make any money off of it. The only money, the only like there was only like two games I made a shit ton of money off. I made the most money off of Pokemon Gale of XD Gale of Darkness. Yeah, the because Pokemon games sell for crazy. If I had actually, if I had any mind to sell Pokemon games, I would have. I could have sold all my 3ds Pokemon, all my DS and 3ds Pokemon games, and made bank. But I wasn't going to do that because I already know that once I sell these Pokemon games, I'm going to get nostalgic, and then I'm just, and then I'm going <laughs> to sit here, boohoo crying that I can't play. And then also, you know, like, and then seeing how how much people are selling black for, like for like a hundred dollars like a hundred bucks for co- pokemon po- copy pokemon black 2 which i'm like i already have this i need your freaking i have it literally in my bag which i was playing it with, uh, on the way up here no fuck that. <laughs> so, so and then the other one was my copy of marvel's capcom 2 for ps2 oh shit that got me a, yeah that got me like a hundred and something like over a hundred and something with like both of them got me like that one got me a like hundred while well, pokemon's together got 150 on its own All right. um so yeah that was it was a it was a fun time. There were like some video game tournaments going on for like retro for some retro stuff, which I was really fi- fond of, like old Smash and uh, like Smash but Smash One and Melee, and you know feeding into those people who ne- who won't give up on that game. They also had a Halo tournament for like oh cool. I can't remember which, I can't remember which one it was. That's I don't the best which tournament one it right was. there. I think it was two. Yeah, any of them? <laughs> any of them would have been great. <laughs> and then they had like people like going through like people taking um turns trying it's like you would sign up to go through altered beast and see how far you could get oh that fucking one game used to scare me as a kid <laughs> oh um, Alter, i never played alter pieces i never played alter beast and then uh, like uh i didn't hear about it so i was old so i was way older but that game but uh, that game is fucking but i like but like in between like the things i actually like would go it was hard <laughs> game fucking, that game is hard freaking um it's like it's not as hard as ghosts and goblins but it's pretty difficult only other thing is, I ended up getting a DSi XL for a new D- for and for for because I needed a new normal DS. That's a great system, man. Yeah, and then the, and then that and the system like, well, it ha- they have an XL, and I can save my eyeballs by not yep. having to look at some tiny screen all day. So I'm taking it. So I took it, and then 
I'm gonna and also I'm gonna let the three like everybody was selling 3ds stuff 3ds is like for high amounts. I'm gonna, and then I real I watching it I realized I'm gonna let the hype for the fact that 3ds is dead die down and then watch a lot of these systems stop being almost three hundred dollars because they're like they are because like they're milking the fuck out of it. And then the only other game I bought was this game called Enchanted Arms. It's this it's a apparently a FromSoft like strategy rpg but the reason i bought it me and my friend bought it i bought the ps3 version he got the 360 version because the 360 version he had already gotten it and then i mean, found the ps3 version he's like you should get this and i'm like oh yeah i'll do that and because it just got delisted off of online off of online stores on playstation and xbox 360 and already it's gone up from 20 dollars to physical to about 70 already now because it's a rare game from FromSoft that they don't that they don't make it that they don't make those kind of games anymore. So essentially, that game's growing up and pr- going up in price, and someone who actually is going to want it is going to ask for it. And then my friend, and then so he, so my friend gave me like some links to some sites to if I wanted to try and sell it later. And I said I'll look into it. But other than that, it was a fun time. We, you know, Austin's a nice city outside of you know the crazy homeless problem they have, and it's not like. It's not like people just don't, people like living in no, They're like the crazy homeless people, you know, the ones that are sitting there like fucking, but like fucking st- poking at the sky and like one dude's like just sitting there with his pants, with his like, pa- with his like pants down with his, with, his, with, with like, his, with his, with like, with his penis in his hand, fucking just not even doing anything, just standing there, just sitting there. <laughs> Would you? Just holding on to it in the, it, baking in the sun. I'm like, and we, we drove past it as I saw it because we, we were driving past him and it's like, and it's like, it was hard to not notice because he was like right there in the path of the car. And like, it was like, what's going on? It's like, oh, I'm not going to help him out. He's a crazy, it's like, he's a crazy homeless person. Most likely if you went up to him, he would have hissed at you or something. And, but other than that, it was, you know, it was okay. We had some like really expensive barbecue for a really good. It was, it was really good though. They didn't, it didn't come in like, but other than that, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. I got to hang out with friends I haven't seen in forever, and we were hoping to plan something else for like next year, maybe next, maybe getting a next year or something. Nice. Well, you got to hang out with these friends over here that you haven't seen. Yeah, forever. you guys are the you guys are the ne- next on the docket. The only reason that it was easy to hang out with them is because we because we live in Texas. Yeah, I'm. I am. I already have like a two hundred dollars in the save in my savings in my savings thing because I just take out fifty dollars for every paycheck. By October, I'm going to see how much I have, and depending on what's going on with um fa- with um fa- with uh personal family stuff, Don't I should on a be PS5, able to. <laughs> I I want well the PS5 is its own um savings fund. Well, just use that use that fund towards your trip. Better use. <laughs> you're Lifetime just saying memories. that because you don't want. You're just saying that because you want me to be here sooner, and also because I don't buy a PS5. <laughs> if you if you had said that you were that was like your Xbox fund, that'd be like, whoa, whoa, you don't have to see us right away, Julian. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Get anyway, some Game Pass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, I already have it on PC. Oh, good. I That's have great. Free, I yeah, that. because Discord. You need a I, PS5 I, then. Well, I keep subscribing to Discord, so I have free. I have free. I get, keep getting these things for PC for free, and I'm actually going to try and. Well, I was good, but. Anyway, focus. <laughs> I am saving up to try and come see to come see you guys, or at least like because if I can't fund my, I'm gonna at least have. I need a fund. I need these funds for plane tickets and a rental car. Everything else is already most likely going. It's like I don't think I already have Scott and Bobby saying, "Stay with me, stay with me, <laughs> yeah. stay with me, stay with me." It's got Scott's folks already know I'm I'm cool with it. To be honest, I might take up Bobby on his offer because I think I might have a lot more freedom staying at Bobby's house. To a lot more fun too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Also, I don't know if Bobby's gonna be able to keep his hands off me if he does. If I did. That's the only problem. Well, that, that's that's your deciding factor right there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, other than that, it's good. Other than that, that's pretty much what's been going on with me. I like it. Very nice. Uh, very busy. <laughs> well, speaking <laughs> of Bobby, I mean, the main thing I've had on my end is I've been keeping up with Bobby's Japan trip because he is over there as a judge in Masters, I believe it was, and or a head judge. And Mm -hmm. that's for the Pokemon World Championship TCG tournament that is taking place in Japan. And he got a a trip out there as part of the being a judge for the for the event. And he's been sharing on our Patreon Discord a bunch of images, pictures, weeb stuff. Uh, And it's usually late at night because obviously he's in a different time zone. But he's Mm -hmm. there's amazing. He's been to the Pokemon Center. He's been to the Capcom store. I think he went to one an A Nintendo store or a Pokemon store that was separate from the Pokemon Center. Different cafes. Mm. Went across a, a maid cafe that he Scott kept telling him to go into. 
and and just all the massive amounts of people that are in there. It's so concentrated. And like, yeah, because I- um, right now I was talking to Scott about this last night because um, literally the before the Pokemon Championships, the Yu Gi Oh Championships were going on. The Yu Gi Oh Japan Championships were going on. So yeah. Yu Gi Oh had a like they had they just had people from Yu Gi Oh there, and then like a few weeks before and now the Pokemon stuff has it where it's even more people. And then also a lot of people who could visit Japan before Japan, like this year reopened their um earlier this year, reopened their tourism, mm-hmm. the, tourism tur- the tourism. So like out of, out of, you know, out of country tourism. So a lot of people are doing the same thing that happened to Disney back you know, Disney back in 2021. It's revenge, vac- revenge cations. People, <laughs> right. are, people are like, I want to go. I, I had this money to go to Japan. I'm going to Japan, freaking just going there. So it's super crowded right now. And then during the summer, it's even more crowded because there's all these like things that happen during the summer in Japan. And also it's like blistering hot out there. So everybody's like burning a lot. Everybody, all the people who I've seen like talk about stuff about Japan, they're like, the, it's like all these Pokemon people who I've seen, they're like, I'm burning alive. It's so hot. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> And then like Scott's like we gotta we gotta expedite the trip. I'm like okay okay hold up we need to save money we can talk about we gotta save money we can talk about this. I told Scott be going back to Florida is more important. Going back to Florida is more important right. because it's not just me. Go- I might not just me. I might be going back to visit you guys, but I might not be alone. Technically. Oh, I might have my, my family wants to also plan a trip to Florida. Oh okay. So I might. So if I can't do it this year, I'm going to be piggybacking off of the group off of the family group effort of going to florida of going to florida and i'm gonna and they already know that i'm gonna end up paying for my own rental car doing my own thing and running off and then it's long and then you know maybe coming back on my own because i might stay longer later. my mom was only my mom and my family is only planning on staying there for like four days most likely knowing me i'm gonna be there seven i'll be there yeah, six well, or seven days I, I hope you see us more than last time i remember i was i had my feelings hurt a little bit i'm like man i barely saw him <laughs> <sighs> i had i had a full schedule last time i showed up and then also i had and remember, I had Megan with me. I didn't want to drag Megan around to see. I didn't oh, want to yeah, drag Megan right. around because, my, because that trip, w- because it was supposed to be that trip was to show to bring her to Florida, show her, show her that, show her, show her, di- show her Disney, show her Harry Potter junk, show her Universal, all that junk, and then and us, and also for us to visit a friend in friend in Tampa, so uh, who used to work with us in here in Texas so, and all that stuff, and then so, and then it was going to be okay. I was going to save up a little, save up some money. And then in March, and then and then like in March, plan to come back in freaking like May or something, <laughs> you know. And then like it was 2019 when we had, when I went there, and then you know 2020 happened, and then that kind of just pushed things back, and then financial and life issues pushed it back even further. But I am ready. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to visit everybody. I need technically that tri- 2019 trip was the first time I met Bobby in in human form. <laughs> What'd you think? I don't remember because I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, time for a refresher. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> because I all our, because a lot of people like because a lot of it was hot, so a lot of us were wearing shades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Was that the Epcot trip? Yeah, that was the Epcot trip. All of us were wearing shades, so I couldn't really like see faces. I think Bobby got there later than the rest of us. Maybe he, he yeah. came because like, we all because we because we all met earlier that day, and then Bobby showed up later on. And by the time we had like gone through half a world showcase, Bobby showed up. So my taste my bitter flavors taste has risen and my sweets taste has died as has, has gone down significantly in a in a twist so i'm a lot more i can deal with more the more bitter liquors <laughs> <laughs> except for um except for beer i'm still not a fan of beer i don't i don't understand the appeal really of beer i usually it's like i'm more of a i'm still more of a cocktail person but i can handle like I like had the first time Jaeger and it's like, it didn't almost kill me <laughs> this time. <laughs> Still can't do tequila though. Tequila in my, me and my, my body and tequila don't mix. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that stuff, but every time I, every time, because even it's Mexican if I'm not and here, and you, you don't do Mexican yeah, stuff. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's yet more it's evidence. It's not more evidence. Freaking. I can, it's like, I had another Mexican drink. I don't know what it's called, but I could drink that just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was like, and then, Wine, it's acquired. It has to be a fl- so, you know, it's like certain flavors of wine I like and certain flavors I don't. But I'm not, but, you know, it's like, but wine is like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited for that trip, and and again, it's 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 been nice seeing. That's another excuse to join our Patreon because that's where you can see these pictures from Bobby of Japan. If you've never been to Japan, it's almost like taking a little tour with him as he uploads these pictures late at night. And I hope to have Bobby on the show in the next week or two, and hopefully he can share his experience in 
Japan, and they're in the whole Pokemon tournament. Obviously, I want to give them time to recover, but it's also Bobby. The guy doesn't sleep and rest. <laughs> no, so, he does. Uh, no, no, he no, he does. I play video games with him, and he'll run in, and just like me, his body will just oh, shut no down. Shit, he falls asleep. Shut down when it needs to, and so you know he. That's why he can't complain about me passing out because he's right. done it himself. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I got to bring this up to him. <laughs> yeah, because we were playing. Uh, we were playing here in your channel once, and he just. Passes out on me. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay, good to know. Good to know. He's probably listening to this now. Like, <laughs> liar! I didn't do such a thing. Yep, yes, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just like me, it's so instantaneous. You didn't notice. <laughs> Mentally. Well, Julian, thank you again for being on this week and for helping with this week's news with gaming, Disney stuff in there, especially and anime. Please let them know where the Brocats can find you and let them know about Lazy Gaming Guys. Yes, you can find the Lazy Gaming Guys on YouTube.com slash at Lazy Gaming Guys. All the letters of Lazy Gaming Guys are capitalized, by the way. The, well, not every single letter, just the, you know, the main letters. You know what I mean. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. We're also on... <laughs> Fucking, I can't say this anyway. I would say Twitter, but X. X.com. <laughs> X.com as at Lazy Gaming Guys. Or you can find me at Kage023, at Kage where right now, because... X as for the x.com craze i am currently not showing my face i am an org i have a little organization kingdom hearts hood on right now because if they're gonna call us x i'm going to become what i'm going to become what it wants i have changed my name on twitter but currently right now i am not julian i'm not king julian on twitter that is king julian is um gone until i until someone kills my nobody and fixes me i am currently how does that name go again because it's super stupid it, it's because it, i jalucin <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um i have an x in my name i sound cool i'm bro on twitter i can be brooding and i can be constantly retweeting kingdom heart shit because of it no you're still i already did zero, that aren't you though yeah yeah you're still yeah i'm still kage zero on there, it's just the organization the name, 15 thing. Just the name organization thingy name is on there now and i was gonna do the same thing lazy gaming guys but i said let's keep that professional, professional. <laughs> and i've also been i also have set up some tweets scheduled tweets for lazy gaming guys stuff to show up some old lazy gaming guys videos to show up on twitter just as a little teaser and i've been also on x yeah on x and also have been going through old street i've been painstakingly going through old streams and trying to make clips for the channel and it's been very difficult because i forget how annoying we are <laughs> do the chart do the chart clip <laughs> i've been the you know, there's so many i don't know which episode that is i gotta act because i gotta ask the i gotta ask freaking one of gotta ask scott because he had it linked at one point and i don't remember when he linked he had it linked at one point so he'll, he'll be able to give it to me and then i can post that another Yes. Dumb and if, things. <laughs> and if you want to download the Shart or the Plunger episode, just search on your favorite podcatcher, Lazy Gaming Guys, and then the word Plunger or Lazy Gaming Guys, and then the word Shart. And I specifically put those words in the title so that they popped up whenever I search and want to listen to the infamous Julian Shart or the infamous Plunger debate <laughs> between Scott and Omni. Oh, right. <laughs> <Fucking hell>. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> that tickled you, huh? You think that, that oh, was funny? I loved it. It was uh, amazing. And then you left at one point. I need to know the background of this, and then we'll we'll for sure sign off. Did I, You left at one point. Was it to talk to him on the phone? Did Scott call you, or did you call Scott? <laughs> I left at one point. Uh, I went to the bathroom, but I also texted him. It's like, are you? It's like, it's like you were going to come back, and you were going to come back, and you were. It's, he did a, I needed to take a breather. It's like you were going to get back on the stream right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, it's like. <sighs> I leave them because, you know, I, I stop participating and I leave them alone for 10 minutes. And this is what happens. Just like what Scott and Jacques, just like what Scott and Jacques, I leave them alone and they do, and they, and then they either have a, they have some stupid episode where, where nothing happens or they talk about something really stupid, <laughs> really, really <laughs> stupid. Love them to death, but God, I can't leave them alone. God, I sometimes can't leave them alone. That's that's like, I was hoping Omni could ha handle it, but then, but you know, it's like, no, he can't, he can't do everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i highly suggest you all check out that episode again lazy gaming guys and then search plunger on your favorite podcatcher and you will see two of uh, the lazy gaming guys argue over why you should never own a plunger or why a plunger is an essential item in the bathroom it's entertaining check it oh. out <laughs> 
But there will be links to everywhere you can find Julian and Lazy Gaming Guys in the description of today's episode. Just scroll on over. And also this week, if you need any mugs, t-shirts, sweaters, head on over to our Tee Public store. Go to thereasonsimbroke.com and click on Merch, and it will lead you to our Tee Public store. There's some stuff in there like Sonic the Hedgehog, Star Trek, Xbox, Kingdom of Hearts, Star Fox, Batman... Lots of great designs on our Tee Public. Once again, thereasonsimbroke.com slash merch. But thank you for joining us this week. I've been Daniel, joined by Julian, and Brocat Core, all will be well. So out of all the photos that Bobby has been sharing in Japan, is there one place that you're like, oh, I definitely need to go there? <sighs> he showed the he showed pictures of freaking some of common rider places. I am so jealous. I was that's when it finally hit the jealousy level finally hit me. And <laughs> also like it's like, yeah, the jump museum's not jump museum is nice. The Capcom the Capcom area he was in, also like, oh, that's so dope. So dope. Uh the Hokemon Center. It's a thing. I've actually been on one in New York. Actually, I didn't yeah, get yeah, anything into taking pictures. Back. I didn't take a picture because it was back before I actually had. I, I had my own like. Phone. I had like good phones. I had a good phone to do, do that kind of stuff with. And then he took some pictures of Kingdom Hearts stuff. Uh, I saw. It's like the biggest thing that he went to when he went to the square. He went to the square. He went to the Final Fantasy Cafe. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. That's when you instantly would. If you would go there, instant come immediately. <laughs> you I would. I would. It's like, can I stay here? Can, it's like, can I get like another meal and portion? And they'd have to kick me out because I ate too much because uh, <laughs> I'm just taking too much food. But like, uh, it's just so. But like, I literally like looking at his pictures and seeing like all these. Seeing like literally, it's not just like Japanese people in there. It's like there's like. There's like other, there's like other like people in there and all that stuff, and it's like yes, 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 yes. Look at that Final Fantasy. Look at that Final Fantasy. Look at that Final Fantasy cafe. It looks so good. It looks so good. And, uh, now, like because of this, like I said, Scott is now expediting this trip. He is like ready. He is like ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> He's like, I wanna go. I wanna go to Japan. And it's like we. Well, I wanna do it as a group of lazy gaming guys. I feel like he's gonna go without us if we don't, even if even if if we don't freaking try i'm not gonna but i can't let him go alone i gotta convince some it's like if i can't do it i gotta convince Jacques to save up money and do it but if Jacques goes he's not gonna go alone he's gonna go with his girlfriend yeah but i so i gotta commit somebody i gotta convince somebody else i gotta find a, i gotta find another one of our friends who i know that's gonna go i have another one of our friends i can talk to that was gonna go with scott originally and i gotta get him gotta make sure that he's still down to do that because i cannot because i can't i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it but then within the time frame he wants but hopefully i can convince him to not try to do it at the earliest of next year he said the <laughs> earliest being next being in february i'm like yeah That's february crazy. but like but like it's gonna be cold but i i get it it's gonna be cheap 